Afternoon, everybody. Uh, Paul Gregory from Burns and McDonald, Digital Delivery Manager. First time here on BIMXT online, but um, we were, I'm actually a board member for BIMXT Virginia Beach. So good to be here. Glad to share some information with everybody. Um, quick tidbits. This is just, you know, our way, the information that I'm providing is going to be a little bit, I'll call it biased to how we do things at Burns and McDonald. Um, granted, you know, please work with your individual uh, companies, security groups, and so on uh, to kind of verify some of the information and how it works for your individual groups. Um, but the things that I'm going to talk about, you know, secure access and ways to exchange data. Um, three of the ways that we actually do exchange data here in Burns and McDonald, uh, of course, OneDrive from Microsoft. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest ones that quite a lot of us probably use. Acelion KiteWorks is another one that we use, especially when we start talking about secure data with CUI for the federal side of the world. Um, also DOD Safe, kind of when we deal with any of the day-to-day um, -day file trades with the government themselves, whether it be Corps of Engineers, uh, NAFAC, any of those other DOD type entities that are out there. So I'll kind of go a little bit into each one of those, give you a quick few tidbits and then walk out from there. So for OneDrive, um, of course, everybody should understand that Teams and SharePoint are built on OneDrive or vice versa, however you want to mix and match it. They all talk to the same system. Um, all of them are also built on Microsoft Azure. So when you start looking at uh, the different Azure programs and services that are out there, um, all that stuff is hosted in um, pulled from there. Um, one of the things I put in here about verify your service level, um, as I'll show on the slide a little bit later, there are a lot of different, uh, there's a few different versions of Azure. Uh, so just want to make sure that, you know, like I said, work with your company, your security groups to figure out which Azure you're on. Um, of course, with OneDrive, you get your internal and external sharing capability, along with being able to use, you know, single or multiple people. One of the big benefits that I use for uh, OneDrive is, is with the mobile app. Um, I've had a handful of times where I'll have a file ready to go and not get the email until I'm on the drive home or already home. And it's nice to be able to just grab my phone and be able to send it directly from there. Um, the last part, talking about syncing uh, for File Explorer, it has a functionality that I use a lot. Um, it does use your OneDrive to actually sync the information up and down between the SharePoints and your individual computer. Um, but I use it because there are a lot of files that I'm trading back and forth pretty consistently on a daily basis. Quantity of files and file size. So I have learned that using that sync functionality is a good thing for me to actually use. Quick other tidbit about OneDrive, when you actually get to do those links, please pay attention to some of the settings that are kind of underneath that. Um, sometimes it's defaulted to different settings. Um, so when you go and do the share and you get that little window in the middle right there, you click on the gearbox up in the top right hand corner. I know the uh, OneDrive thing has changed now. It just happened in the last handful of months, but that gear is still up there uh, for the settings. Go and look at what your settings is, which is that far right window. Depending on which one, uh, which folder you're sharing or which file you're sharing, those settings may be different by default. Uh, for instance, for us, default is people in Burns and McDonald a lot of times. So no matter who I send that link to, as it gets forwarded along, anybody Burns and McDonald automatically has access. So if you want to restrict that access to only a handful of people, use the people you choose, or depending on the folder, you may be able to use the existing access uh, setting to get in there. Lastly, bottom right hand corner, do you want them to view? Uh, do they want to edit? You want to block the download so they can only view it and can't download the file. These are a couple of quick tidbits that I've found useful depending on who I'm sending stuff to. Okay. The second one, uh, Celion KiteWorks, um, this one's completely web-based. Um, so you're uploading your files to their system. They're hosted from there. Uh, one of the benefits, like I mentioned, for KiteWorks is the CUI side of things for FedRAMP. Um, so you're pretty, pretty secure on being able to use that for quite a bit of data. Um, we are able to use SSO uh, for single sign-on when you get there, so you don't have to create a whole nother username to get into it. Um, there is an expiration for the files that you upload. For I don't know if they're set per company or if it's set per from KiteWorks. Somebody can verify that later. Uh, but I do know for mine, it's every 14 days the files expire and are no longer available. So that's a good thing with, hey, I want to put something up, get somebody to be able to download it, and it's gone. does not exist after that expiration date. Um, one good thing, additionally, context list. So as you punch names in and hey, email addresses, whatever it is that you want to send information to, those emails are saved into their system. So that way you can start typing and you'll get that preview list of people you've sent to before. Another good part, no file size limit. 
Um, so if we need to send a point cloud that's gigs of data, it can hold it. Uh, the 100 gigabyte folder size is, hey, I'm going to load a folder of multiple files. That's when you hit an upload size limit is just because they don't want to hit that 100 gig per folder upload at one time. Last one I mentioned was DOD safe. Not a whole lot of information about this one because it is owned by the government. Um, but every, everything that's up there is what you see. Uh, Web-based file transfer. Um, it, the key with this one is that a government personnel has to initiate that. We cannot, it used to be where we could go to that site, initiate an upload and send it to them. They would get it. We can't do that now. The government entity or government personnel has to do that. Um, it can contain certain secure, per, uh, secure information, including CUI, along with some personal uh, personal. Identification information, PII, both of those can be hosted through the system. Just a couple additional checkboxes to get there. Last tidbit, and this is a part of the, um, when I did this here locally at Virginia Beach that a lot of people were kind of like, oh, didn't know that. Um, so depending on which system you're actually using for file share, um, wherever that uh, information is stored, if you're dealing with the federal side of the world, you have to think about FedRAMP. Uh, which is FedRAMP Marketplace is the other side of it as well, which is where that uh, link at the bottom there actually goes to. These are the same systems that I was just talking about and how they are FedRAMP authorized. Um, like I mentioned with Azure, the three in the middle, there's three different flavors and three different authorizations that are there. So depending on which one you're actually using, you may have different authorizations in different use cases. The biggest one that was an eye opener for quite a few of us, some of us that are in the government world and working with Autodesk on a good basis, um, the Autodesk for government still is not FedRAMP authorized. Um, so, you know, for us at Burns and Mac and kind of as I've heard from a global holistic from the government side of it is we shouldn't be using the, the uh, ACC stuff for anything federal projects. So that was an eye opener for a lot of different groups out there. Um, but it is information that, I, you know, when I brought, broadcast this out, everybody was like, good to know. I've had a few kudos from different groups about saying, yeah, it, it is out there. We don't want to use it. We're trying to work on it from all different sides. So that's kind of the quick and dirty of all uh, shares, trying to work through everything. Um, of course, so we'll have questions as we go. Dan, I'll throw it back to you unless there's questions you want to go through right now. We actually do have a few questions. What are your best practices for sharing files when you have so many different needs? OneDrive, ACC, BIM 360, et cetera. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, mostly I use OneDrive. Uh, reason why I use OneDrive, nine times out of 10, we have a Teams page connected to our projects, which is that SharePoint and sharing area that we can use. So OneDrive typically is my go-to, um, but I hear recently I've started using KiteWorks more just because of the CUI side of the house that we're getting into. So those would be my two primaries other than DOD safe, just because that comes from NAVFAC or Core of Engineers as I get information. But I'd say OneDrive being the primary. All right. Thank you. And uh, does OneDrive give traffic, tracking for who downloads what file? At the very early on stages, it did give me a notification of person downloaded file. I have not seen that of recent. Uh, one thing I do like about KiteWorks is it does give you that automated email, hey, person accessed and downloaded the file. So there's a, a couple of tidbits. I, there is probably a tracking mechanism somewhere within the OneDrive system. I just don't know where that is right now. And Jason has a question as well. Um, he's saying that they use ACC. Keep adding that to the mural, Jason. It's where it should be. <laughs> uh, they use Mural for federal projects. Um, is there any problems that you guys are seeing on that side? I think a lot of it has to be what data are you putting on Mural? Um, if, you're, if you're using Mural as in, I'll phrase it like Bluebeam uh, studio sessions and you're sharing your drawings up there, should probably not be up there is the way I would look at it. Um, now, granted, don't take that as clear direction, um, but I just my preference, I would probably say it shouldn't be up there. <laughs> 